So main topic of today's workshop will be women's strikes in Poland that took place since October 2020. Uh, in my speech, I will also talk about the class and historical context uh, of the abortion laws in Poland, about what happened in October and afterwards, about the pandemic context, context uh, about the symbols of the protesters. Uh, I will also focus on the outcome of the protest, how it affected the politics, uh, the position of the Catholic Church in Poland, people's mentality and about our organization, what we did and how we are growing now. Uh, I want to show you the bigger picture, so I will not only talk about protests, but also other important aspects that are somehow connected to these protests. Uh, so first, uh, first point is the historical context. As Marxists, we need to look at everything in a broader context, broader perspective. So I will talk about the history of the abortion laws in Poland. Sorry about my cat in the background. <laughs> uh, okay, so the history of the abortion laws in, in Poland. Before the Second World War, the abortion was illegal in Poland, but in the early 50s, it became legal. In 1956, uh, the same legalized abortion in cases where the woman was experiencing a difficult living conditions. The interpretation of the change in the law varied from a restrictive interpretation in the late 50s to, which in which, to one in which abortion was allowed on requests. Uh, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, it was also uh, available on request in Poland. Uh, it was not uncommon that women from other countries, such as Sweden, uh, um, where, uh, where abortions were restricted, traveled to Poland to carry out abortions, which were accessible and affordable. It is kind of ironic how the tables have turned now, when the Swedish and Icelandic government is planning to make a law that would allow Polish women to get free and legal abortion in their countries as a gesture of gratitude and solidarity. Uh, the procedural requirement needed, needed for obtaining a legal abortions were changed several times over the years, uh, but the most important thing happened in 1990. Uh, after the end of so-called communist rule, so the end of the Polish People's Republic, when the ordinance of 30 of April 1990 made access to abortion more difficult. A major change came in 1993 when the law was, law was further tightened, removing the entirely the difficult living conditions as a ground for abortions. As such, abortions could be legally obtained only in cases of serious threat to the health or the, of the pregnant woman, as attested by two physicians, cases of rape or incest confirmed by a prosecutor, and cases in which the prenatal test confirmed by two physicians demonstrated that the fetus was seriously and irreversibly damaged. In 1996, amendment to the law allowed abortion on social ground, but the law was again struck down in 1997 by Const Constitutional Court. It was so-called compromise, and it was so until the year 2020. So what happened in the 2020 and why we now in Poland have the harshest abortion law in Europe? Almost all legal abortion in Poland, around 99%, were performed on the ground of the fatal, uh, fetal defects. In June 2011, Polish anti-abortion NGOs collected over 500,000 signatures for a proposed bill to ban abortion in Poland altogether. The bill, while rejected by the major of the MPs, got enough support to be sent to the same committee for further amendments. The move was criticized by the right-wing opposition parties, uh, law and justice and Poland comes first, which expressed their support for the bill. The left-wing Democratic Left Alliance pursues a pro-choice polity and was against the bill. The ruling at that time, Civic Platform, while consider considering itself in favor of the current registration and being called the Liberal Party, was divided on the matter and more than 60 of the party's MP voted in favor of the bill. Poland is one of the Europe's most strongly Catholic countries. 
but there was no public pressure for this. And for years, the opinion poll said a clear majority of polls opposed a more restrictive law. Uh, the Law and Justice Party government in Poland, led by a right-wing Catholics and nationalists, have for years tried to carry through extreme laws against abortion under pressure from the Catholic Church. Any attempts so far have been resisted by mass mobilization of predominantly young and working class women on the streets during so-called black protests since 2016. But bishops and lay Catholic groups pressed the government and the Law and Justice Party to impose a stricter law. Uh, the party supports traditional Catholic values, but changes it was problematic. There was opposition both in Parliament and on the streets. Uh, in 2016, an estimated 100,000 people all around Poland, mostly women, protested to block an attempt to tighten the law. Uh, abortion rights advocates say those numbers reflect the restrictions already in effect, which make it all but impossible for Polish women to obtain a legal abortion, prompting them to seek an illegal abortion or have them abroad instead. In practice, it takes weeks, sometimes months, to obtain a legal abortion, said Karolina Wienckiewicz, a lawyer and an activist for a group Abortion Without Borders. Some people decide to risk the battle in Poland, others look for alternatives. Uh, this, the Human Rights Commissioner of the Council of Europe, which advocates for right and democratic rule, noted the situation in criticizing the court decision. 22nd of October 2020, however, marks a turning point. Polish, Polish Constitutional Tribunal found that abortion in the case of severe fetal defects is inconsistent with the article of with the 38th article of the Polish Constitution. The piece took its provocation and attacks one step too far. Due to the highest rate in cases of coronavirus since the start of the pandemic, the government at the same time banned gatherings of more than five people, be it indoors or outdoors. So practically it made it impossible for us to protest. Uh, the Chief Justice Julia Przyłemska said in ruling that existing legislation, one of the most uh, Europe's most restrictive that allows for the abortion of malformed fetuses with, uh, was incompatible with the constitution. After the rulings goes into effect, abortion will only be permissible in Poland in the case of rape, incest or threat to a mother's hair, health and life, which make up about only 2% of legal termination in the recent years. Support for this ban was expressed by Kaja Godek, a right-wing politician who additionally supports the prohibition of abortion when contraception occurs as a result of rape. The anti-abortion activist was asked on radio about the remaining cases of termination of pregnancy. The second option allowed abortion if the pregnancy resulted from a prohibited act, such as rape, up to 12 weeks from conception. Godex stated, I trust that the regulation will also be abolished because we are the full protection of life. A child conceived of rape is also a victim of rape. It has the right to conceive. On the 22nd of October, the Constitutional Tribunal, consisting mainly of the judges appointed by the ruling party, so the law and justice, declared that the law authorizing abortion for malformed fetuses to be unconstitutional, effectively banning most of the small numbers of the official abortions carried out in Poland. Street protests by people opposed to the ruling took place on the 22nd of October in 60 Polish towns and on the night of 23rd of October and again on 24th of October in town centers in front of the police offices, in front of the offices of religious administrators. On the 25th of October, protested, protesters staged sit-ins in Catholic churches disrupting Sunday masses in several cities, including Poznań and Katowice. On the 23rd of October, the Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki issued an order for the military police to help the civilian police in the protection of safety of, and public order, starting from the 28th of October. Uh, a national-wide uh, women's strike was scheduled for that day. The official reason, of course, was the COVID pandemic in Poland. 
and the TV commented that the order was issued during the women's rights protests. The Polish Ministry of Defense, of course, stated on Twitter that the military police uh, role was standard and unrelated to the women's rights protests. Um, uh, on the 29th of October 2020, we had something like a general strike. Most of the women didn't go to work. We all took a day off because we protested. On the 30th of October, around one, about 100,000 people took to the streets of Warsaw in a huge protest against the Polish authorities of the, the ruling on abortion rights. It was the biggest protest since the fall of the P Polish People's Republic. The ruling was published in the Journal of Laws on the 27th of January 2021 and is effective as of this date. So you may ask, why is this a historic movement? What is so unusual about these protests? What happened in October far exceeds past movements, both in terms of quantity and quality. For the past 30 years, we have never seen protests on such a big scale. Um, it, it is not an exaggeration to say, uh, to say that it felt like almost everyone was protesting. The protest symbols were everywhere. Everyone was talking about it. This was by no doubt caused by the years of experience of peace rule, which was seen as humiliating, especially for women, LGBT people, as well as workers and youth as a whole. On top of this, the law and justice were overseeing a sharp recession, which was and still is threatening the livelihoods of millions. Poland has avoided the main burn of the 2008 crisis, but now it has caught up with it. The situation as Poland was bad before. People were losing their jobs. The government was not providing any help for those who were in need. People were angry and afraid. They knew that there was no help coming, that the hospitals were full, that their loved ones were dying in the crowded hospitals, that the authorities were not handling the pandemic situation well. For many years, the nurses and doctors have been striking and protesting, asking for better salary and working conditions. The government answer was always, you can go work somewhere else. And they did. And now we have shortage of staff in hospitals and most of them are underpaid. Women were especially affected. The job that most uh, were mostly affected by the pandemics were waitresses, shop assistants, people working part-time. So these were jobs mostly done by women. Also due to the closing of the schools and preschools, most women were forced to, were forced to work two jobs at the same time. So helping their children with online classes and working their jobs at the same time. The disparity between classes became more and more visible. Children from poorer families were sometimes excluded from online classes due to the lack of the internet connection or because their family didn't own a computer needed for their lessons. The movement started with spontaneous protests in the main street cities, but had uh, later gained a huge amount of momentum. On Monday, 26th of October, 20. 226 different towns, cities, and even villages protested. On Wednesday, the police confirms 460 demonstrations. The main cities of Warsaw, Poznań, Kraków, or Łódź have, been, uh, have seen mass turnouts and have been effectively brought to a standstill by people protesting in their cars. The mood was uh, starkly against anything that resembles the status quo. Stages of Pope John, uh, Pope John Paul II, Ronald Reagan, and other figureheads of the capitalist restorations have been vandalized. Sunday masses have been interrupted, the church walls graffitied and posted by the protesters. The main slogans include, I wish I could abort my government, and this is war. Uh, amazingly, and what surprised us the most, the quiet towns and rural areas were seeing unprecedented participation in the protests. 10,000 10, uh, 10, people took part uh, in a march in Białystok, a traditional 
sorry, it's my cat, <laughs> a traditional stronghold on Polish uh, on law and justice party, which is very conservative uh, uh, background. Tiny towns were witnessing big demonstrations like never before. Uh, for example, at Trzebnica, a small town with a population of 10,000 uh, people has seen a demonstration of 2,000. In the tiny town of Nowy Dwór Gdańsk, farmers have blocked all the main roads with their tractors. Some people from these villages say the last time they have seen so many people on the street was during the first made parade during the Polish People's Republic. There was no corner of the country that was left unaffected. It was indeed the participation of the working class and proletarian methods of struggle, including strikes, that gave this movement its strength. But we need to remember that there were also members of the middle class and petty bourgeois on the streets. Surprisingly, other groups joined the protesters as well. Tram drivers, bus drivers, taxi drivers has taken part in their road blockades. Miners, nurses, teachers, and other group of workers represented by trade unions have expressed their support. The kind of widespread support, direct or indirect, was no seen on this scale in the original abortion law protest of 2016. Although the role of the police has been to defend the status quo with reports of abuse, violence, and pepper spraying, morale in the ranks was visibly low. In Krakow, whole groups of police officers have put down their batons and joined the protesters. This reflects the strength of the mood and the feebleness of the bourgeois state. It is worth mentioning that people who couldn't protest on the streets protest in their cars by blocking the roads. There were online protests and also a financial support for the groups that helps women to, uh, to obtain the legal abortion. For example, the organization Abortion with Our Borders. Jarosław Kaczyński, so the head of the Law and Justice Party and a great eminence in our country, has made a statement in which he attempted to intimidate the movement. He uh, correctly claimed that the attack on Polish Catholic Church is unprecedented in Polish history. He concluded that it is uh, the aim of the movement to destroy Poland and end the history of Polish nation. He proceeded to call on his supporters to defend church at all costs. It was a direct call for the far right represented by the Confederacja, so the Confederation Party, and the most backward layers of the peace supporters to attack the demonstrations. Indeed, there were multiple reports of can, car driving into protests and the fascists using violence to stop the protesters from getting anywhere near the churches. Confederation even started setting up a national guard, which was meant to organize the Polish, the soldiers of Polish patriotism uh, that were other, and there were other groups forming, for example, Jesus Christ soldiers that were meant to protect the churches from the feminists. The movement outnumbered the far right and exposed their weaknesses. Uh, but to maintain this, the power needed to be organized with the full backing of the trade unions and leaders of the left wing parties. Uh, there was no clear leadership, unfortunately, and there was no a mass independent party of the working class. Only this kind of organization would be capable of smashing reaction. Unfortunately, it was not the case. Strike Kobiet, so women's strike in English, an organization through which these people have been called, demanded for the government to resign and for a consecutive council, like in Belarus, to be called up to clean the mess. Uh, it's calls for the council to be made of all pro-democratic groups and expert. It was not carried through though. The self-proclaimed leader of the strike was not democratically chosen and she was not representing the interests of everyone. She was looking at, uh, at all of this from the middle class point of view, talking, for example, about helping the private business owners instead of uh, helping the employees or the people who were unemployed because of the pandemic. Uh, the demand seemed like a step in the right direction, but it was not enough. Who were these experts the leaders wanted to consult? The same economics who oversaw the mass sellout of Poland in 1990s? Or the liberal academics who had no clue about fighting back against Polish uh, government and who play no real role in this movement? 
These liberal elements unfortunately drove this uh, women's strike to a blind, blind alley. Uh, the government knew that the time could wear out the movement, and indeed it had, but it has left a mark on people's mentality. For example, this year's Women's Day manifestations were bigger than ever before, and there was so much police protecting them. The government saw what people were capable of, uh, and now they are afraid of us. Uh, here's, uh, you may ask, what was this strike COVID or the women's strike wanted? So during the protests, they have launched a service to their supporters and have extended the demands, which included banning the far right and fascist groups, uh, decent working and living conditions for everyone, fighting against the climate change, full rights for the LGBT people. So no LGBT from, uh, free zones that the, our government tried to impose, separating the church from the government, uh, and uh, it shows that the angers of the protesters was anger not only on this law, but about the whole system that offers no future for all, especially for the workers and for the youth. Um, uh, eventually, the, uh, the protest cooled down, but we must remember but that the balance of forces is not in the favor of the government. Their action only add fuel to the fire. 75% of the entire population opposes the abortion ban and only 13% supports it. Furthermore, 56% directly supports the protest movements. They have been scenes in which some Legia Warsaw football fans, so a traditionally reactionary group, were standing in defense of women protests and attacking Confederation uh, supporters in fistfights. This is just an example of how sharp and wide reaching this change in mass consciousness is. Of course, Red Front took part in this protest in the major cities. We are providing leaflets and we saw that people were really interested in our ideas. Some of our comrades took part in printing leftist pamphlet with other activists. We gave our commentary on our website fan page and also on the leaflets, explaining that the only way to ensure full equality is through overthrowing the capitalist state. We were marching along the protest protesters carrying the red banners to show that we are there. So uh, the next uh, thing I want to focus. So why is it a class issue? Because women are the working class. I would like to focus on the fact, why do we perceive this as a class issue from our point of view? First of all, illegal abortions were mostly, will mostly affect the poorer people uh, and people from the working class. It is a common thing for people who are in an unwanted pregnancy to simply go to another country and pay for termination of pregnancy. Poorer people don't have means and also they don't have time to do it. They often work part-time with precarious contracts. They don't have free medical care. They cannot go on paid days off and they cannot go on a sick leave. Sometimes they even don't have a car or means to go to the nearest pharmacy to get a test and find out that they are pregnant in time. It is also the same with contraception in Poland. You need to wait extremely long to get to the gyne gynecologist and then he or she can prescribe you pills or other contraception methods for only four months. And then you need to go again. For women from the working class who are struggling with money and they don't have time to wait for the visit, it is sometimes next to impossible to get a contraception and prevent pregnancy. Thank you. Sorry, she really wants to be in this meeting. <laughs> so that is why women are the working class. We earn less for doing the same jobs as men. Uh, women are often forced to work part-time on precarious job contracts because they need to take care of their children and families. Uh, women have less free times because after they finish working at their job, they need to work at home. That is why this day place is in the revolution. Only planned economy, equality and socialism can solve these problems once and for all. 
symbols of the protesters. So on my previous meetings for the UK comrades, I was asked questions about the symbols of the protesters, what they meant, etc. So I figured I will just talk shortly about it here. Uh, the black umbrella, you may have seen it. Uh, most people associated with the symbol of grief and resistance. It is. Uh, it all started during the Prague protest in 2016, when law and justice first thought, started about talking about restriction the abortion law. During the biggest black protest, it was raining, so everyone was calling an umbrella, and hence it became the symbol of the protest. The red light, lightning ball, symbol of anger and strike, strength. It was on protesters' masks. People were putting red lightning bolts on their windows, car, in the shops, restaurants. It was seen everywhere. Wire hangers or matter hangers, a reminder of what happens when there is no access to legal and safe abortions. And what is interesting, in, a, in an act of protest, thousands of wire hangers were sent to the officials and the government members who supported the abortion ban. So uh, another thing is you may see it on the internet like X eight stars and it means it means fuck peace or fuck law and justice and it is a censored way to say it and we could see it everywhere people like drawing the stars or some celebrity was talking and he or she had like I don't know bottles like put like that and peace couldn't make it illegal because these are only eight stars and they don't mean anything really. So, so that was a clever way to show them what we think of them. Another slogans of the people who were protesting was down with the government, this is war, you will never talk alone and I wish I could abort my government. So now I will talk shortly about the repressions after the protests. I will only mention a few cases uh, because there were so many, but I just want to give you an idea how it affected people's lives. So two teachers, women and her husband, were questioned by the court because some of the more conservative teachers from their school were claiming that they should be banned from teaching altogether for supporting women's strikes. Many protesters were accused of vandalism, destroying private property, disturbing the peace, and were charged with assault on police officers and church officials. During these strikes and protests, the officers, officers, police officers, dressed as civilians, were amongst the crowd, and then they were pepper spraying the protesters. Some of them even attacked an MP, um, MPs, even after they showed them their RD and proven that they are MPs and they are, were protected by the immunity. They are also uh, attacking journalists. There was this video online that the police officer took their ID and he just uh, ripped it and threw it away and he pepper sprayed a woman in, his, in her face and it was on the video. Uh, some shops, restaurants, and other buildings that express support for the protesters by handing the right, hanging the right red lightning bolts in their windows, or by providing protesters with snacks, waters, coffee, uh, and tea, were destroyed by the far right group members. We can assume it was not a government action, but. Jarosław Kaczyński, the president of the Law and Justice Party, in his speech on the national TV was asking the patriots to fight against leftists and Antifa members who were a threat to Poland and Polish values. He was calling protesters terrorists, slats, people who were mentally ill. He said that we were not Polish citizens anymore because we decided to protest. Uh, uh, there is a situation from a few days ago over 50 organizations received messages that there were bombs in their offices. And it was said in the emails that it was a revenge on them for support, supporting protests. Uh, st students, some students faced repressions at school. Uh, they were not allowed to attend religion classes, which are mandatory in Poland, unless they signed a document in which they claim they don't support the women's strikes. Some of the university teachers were refusing to give online lectures if any of the students had a women's strike symbol in their Zoom avatars. There was even a case in which a 13-year-old student was questioned by police and court because he shared a post on Facebook that called for others to join the protests. 
uh, some far-right activists decided, decided to form an anti-abortion police. So they made a web page that looked like a page for obtaining illegal abortion. And they were planning to provide the police with personal information of women who were seeking a way to terminate pregnancy. There were many other cases of repressions, of course, and there will be more, but it antagonizes the government and the working class even further. People are beginning to notice that the status quo is not longer neutral and that we cannot agree for things to stay as they are. We need to fight back and not doing anything is almost as bad as supporting the government. It is also worth mentioning that the law didn't shake, change anything when it comes to the number of abortions. If so, it led to more abortion and it made the procedure less safe and more difficult to obtain. I found an article about, about, from Abortion Without Borders that said that from December 2020, almost 50% uh, more people decided to terminate their pregnancy outside Polish borders or illegally within. It may show that first of all, women are afraid to have children in such hard times, and also it has risen awareness that such organization even exists. People were writing the phone number to abortion without borders everywhere, on the walls, on the pavements, uh, they shared the, it, it in social media. So it's also got a huge uh, material support from the protesters, and now it's working even more effectively. Uh, the next part of my speech is the opinion polls, the role of the church and the apostasy. Uh, opinion surveys have shown some decline in peace, in peace popularity in the recent months, but an opinion show, a poll by the government affiliated uh, organization showed uh, it edging back up to 35% this month from 30 in the October. Uh, Law and Justice uh, and its two uh, small parliamentary allies won re-election in 2019 with 44% share of the vote. At the beginning, we saw a rise of support for liberal political parties, especially popular at that time was Szymon Hołownia. He is a Catholic celebrity who is conservative, but at the same time he is young and fun and some people thought he would be a good choice. But after some time, these same people started to realize that he only wanted to gain popularity and abuse the situation and that his views on abortion were the same as uh, law and justice views. From that day, I think people began to be more careful when it comes to trusting politicians and they called out the Coalitia Obywatelska, so the Liberal Party and the main, main opposition to the law and justice on their conservative approach on uh, abortion laws. It showed that people will. Uh, uh, it showed people that there will be no real change unless we change the system. Uh, I need to give you, give you some context also. In Poland, for many years, there was no truly uh, no leftist parties. If there were any leftist organizations, they were very small and insignificant. They never took part in the election and they were mostly focused around Stalinists who fetishized Polish People's Republic on the, or the Soviet Union or around rainbow liberals who were supporting feminism or LGBTQ rights but wanted to do nothing for the working class. Uh, there is only one true leftist party uh, that I think is worth mentioning. It's the uh, party called Raz Razem, so together in English. And they are now in the government. And what is heartwarming, because of their involvement in the protests and etc., they are now gaining more supporters. The polls shows that they have now over 30% support, support amongst young people, so people in ages between 18 and 24 years old. It is an unprecedented for a leftist party to have such a big support among youth since the falls of the Polish People's Republic. Uh, Catholic Church was very strong in Poland. On paper, almost 90% of Polish population is Catholic. But since the protest started, more and more people are starting to turn their backs on the Catholic Church. In 2020, the number of people who denounced the church and, uh, and underwent an apostasy was on unprecedented scale. Poland is one of the countries to have the fastest atheization rate. Five years ago, around 50% of people attended Catholic masses on a regular basis. Now it is only around 30%. 
in October, after the protest, the word apostasy or how to get an apostasy was one of the most Googled phrases in Poland. It is also worth mentioning that there was no such big protest in Poland for the past 30 years. For many people, it was the first time they went to the streets, Pro uh, the first time they protested and first time they faced police brutality. It definitely changed their perception of power and the government. They could feel firsthand that the neutral status quo was not to their advantage. Even now, when the protests cool down, this experience will remain in these people forever, and they will be more ready to find again and again when the right time comes. And I hope that I make it a bit clearer about what happened and what is still happening in Poland with my speech. As you can see, there is hope. The things have already started to change. There is a shift in people's mentality and there is no going back now. Even here in Poland, very conservative country, we have seen people radicalize. radicalize. We have organized, uh, they have organized themselves. Those who were afraid to join the protest, uh, talked over social media with other more experienced people who helped them uh, prepare and who were marching along them to the protests. People started to talk about themselves as leftists or so socialists. It seems like nothing, but it's really a big deal. I remember when I was in high school, no one even dreamed of calling themselves as socialists. If someone was interested in politicians, politics, he or she was usually liberal and even libertarian. Now it has changed. We receive more and more messages from people who are interested in our group and in Marxism. Uh, there will be more protests and more and more people will realize that they need to fight for the better future. That is why we need to be ready. That is why we need a strong Marxist organization and a revolutionary readership. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you.